So 96% of the population, general population, gets white matter disease as they get older. Um, studies show that as you age, everyone will get some white matter disease. Um, and in general, it's been shown that 96% of the population will get, the, will get white matter disease. Um, white matter are the, the pathways that connect the different regions in the brain. Um, the disease of the white matter is usually caused due to um, vascular risk factors. So for example, people who have hypertension um, or who are diabetic, um, it leads to the uh, hardening of the tiny arteries in the brain and um, that can cause a disruption in the blood supply and it can cause lesions in the white matter and that's the white matter disease. So our lab was interested in looking at white matter disease in Alzheimer's. Um, so um, we had patients who were diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and we wanted to see if they had uh, white matter disease on top of the Alzheimer's, whether or not there was a difference in how patients would respond to treatment. So we had two groups of patients, one who had, so both of these groups had Alzheimer's disease and they were being followed over time. And then we had one group that had very little white matter disease and the other group that had quite a lot of white matter disease. So we broke these two groups up into low white matter and high white matter, and then followed them over time. And all of these patients were on treatment. What we found was over one year that patients who had more white matter disease in addition to Alzheimer's disease responded better to treatment in some of the executive and um, working memory tasks. Um, executive tasks would be um, things that involve problem solving, um, reasoning, so, um, so the scale that was developed to look at the white matter disease in the brain um, was looking at the pathways that are primarily affected in Alzheimer's disease, and these are the cholinergic pathways. So we wanted to look at strategic placement of the white matter disease as opposed to white matter disease in the whole brain. And so what we found that was that if this white matter is localized to these pathways and you have Alzheimer's in addition, so Alzheimer's disease in addition to white matter disease in these pathways, you respond better because patients with more white matter disease in these strategic locations responded better compared to patients who had less white matter disease because we were targeting uh, these pathways which are primarily involved in Alzheimer's disease. Um, so these patients are the same to begin with in terms of their cognitive ability. Um, what's happening is that the patients who have more white matter disease uh, have primarily these, so we're looking at strategic involvement of these pathways, and these pathways are the ones that are primarily affected in the, in the patients who had more white matter that we were looking at compared to the other group. And so the treatment is affecting or benefiting these patients because we're targeting the, um, the pathways um, uh, compared to patients who have less white matter disease. So they begin the same, but because they have more involvement of these pathways, and then we're targeting, we're providing them with the cholinesterase inhibitor, they respond better. They're not responding better on everything, just a few things like executive functioning and working memory. More so the things that are um, preserved to later on are the things that are stabilized in these patients. What our study has shown is that we've only looked at the, the cholinergic pathways. So this is one part of the puzzle. There's still a lot that needs to be done because these pathways intermingle with a lot of other pathways that are in the same area. And these other pathways also are involved in executive functioning and working memory tasks. So we're not saying this is the answer to the puzzle, we're saying this is one piece of the puzzle. And it may explain some variability in how patients with Alzheimer's respond to treatment, um, but there is still a lot that needs to be done. And this is by no means the answer to anything, we're just saying, if you have strategic white matter disease in some parts of the brain, then you may respond better to treatment. Um, again, on some tasks, not on everything. Uh, future trials should take into account white matter disease that's located, or specifically um, located in the cholinergic pathways, um, because it may, there's, there's a lot of variability in who responds to treatment with, and who responds to treatment. Um, in patients with Alzheimer's disease, so future trials need to take this also as another factor that may contribute to differences in how p patients are responding and who's responding and who's not responding, but this is definitely something that needs to be explored, explored further, and we need to include this in the future trials to get a sense of whether or not, if you have more white matter in some areas, will that affect treatment or not? So it, 
it needs to be explored further.